Okay, so we've assembled it, and now we're going to put some drive constraints on it. Uh, turns out I may have some issues here. I was look, trying to do this earlier, but let's see. I'll show you some alternatives. What the instructions say is to click angle constraint, always click that left button, and it says to click the back of the train and the work plane. Oh, that time it worked. Didn't work on the other side. Uh, if it doesn't take, try, it didn't work over on the right hand side, but it does work on the left hand side. So if it doesn't work on the right one, try the left one. If neither one of those works, you can do it to the front, but that'll work. Okay, so now I've got that done. And so that was the only constraint. So now what I do, I close this, and now I need to uh, train body up here. I expand that, and I have this angle constraint. So when I expand the train body over here, click the plus sign, I need to right click on the angle constraint, and I click drive constraint. So click on angle constraint, click drive constraint. And that will bring me this one, which you'll see is the same as what we have over here. Okay? Now, um, so when I click play, they turn a little bit. If, uh, and they work, actually, they're t if they turn the wrong way, uh, there are uh, some things, and I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but there is a way to get around. It has to do with this drop down thing here. But now, so if I put uh, 3,600 degrees, and I can speed this up a little bit. Well, even if I don't speed it up. So now if I click play, my wheels are turning. And they're saying, if I change, yes, if I change this uh, increment, can't remember what I used to do, but if I make it uh, five, you can see that it's going faster. And it's counting the degrees up to 3,600. Okay? So, uh, so then we have to make some changes to it to, uh, so that we can use it later. So we click on the parameters button up here at the top. I'm following along the instructions right now. I click the parameters button. And in a second, there should be a big dialog box open up. <clears throat> Excuse me this thing here okay and that's the last one that I did you can see that's the one right there and so I got a number so I click on the number and it turns blue and then I'm going to type the word crank I'm going to do it lowercase so I don't have to remember it every time C R A N K and click done so now I've changed that to be crank uh, now that that's done we don't need those work planes anymore you minimize this and so you can uh, actually I can go back watch this this is pretty cool I can go back to my original wheel when I'm done I can right click on this work plane turn off the visibility now and save it and then when I come back to my train it's gone there too. And in fact, if uh, I'm not sure where the, oh, these guys turn off their visibility, the work axes, and save it. And that is a much better looking train now. And I just realized I never put on the cow catcher. So uh, I'll make a cow catcher, I'll put it on, and when I do the final track assembly, you'll see that it has a uh, the cow catcher thing, because that's got some tricky stuff too. But that's got the full thing assembled.